Rahman Rahim. I start in the name of Allah, the All Merciful, the Ever Merciful, and the Everlasting Curse be on the Satan and his followers. Allah's blessings and peace be upon Muhammad the Prophet and upon his pure family. Our respected viewers, before starting with this episode, allow me to start as usual with one of the sayings of the Master of Martyrs, Al Imam Al Hussein, alayhi salam, when he says, I do not see death but happiness and prosperity, and life with oppressors nothing but anguish. Our respected viewers, peace and blessings be upon you, and welcome to His Imam Hussein, a series of episodes in which we talk about the different stages of Imam Hussein's life, starting from his miraculous birthday, talking about some of the events and stories happened to him during his holy life, mentioning some of the prophetic quotes said in his right by his grandfather, and ending up with his unmatchable martyrdom. My name is Hassan Hadi and I'm honored to be hosting this program. Our respected viewers, in the last episode we spoke about Imam Hussein's messenger sent to Kufa Muslim bin Aqil in order to find out more on the authenticity of the letter sent to him, meaning to Imam Hussein from his followers in Kufa. And today's episode is a continuity for the last episode. Our respected viewers, it's true that Muslim bin Aqil alayhi salam was fearful, but not for the reasons one might naturally assume. Upon reading his Imam's response, Muslim bin Aqil, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, said, It is not for myself that I am afraid. Indeed, for Muslim life and death were at the service of the Imam. His only concern was for his well-being and the success of his mission and his fear was only for the sake of the Imam and his affair. Thus, our respected viewers, Muslim bin Aqil alayhi salam continued his journey with the messengers finally arriving in Kufa. In keeping with the Imam's command, he sought shelter with the most trustworthy person from among the Shia in the city, Al-Mukhtar bin Abi Ubaidah. It's written that Al-Mukhtar was the most honorable and courageous out of all members of his tribe and family, particularly in the intensity of his opposition to the enemies of the holy household, the Prophet of Islam, and was known for his sincerity and devotion to the progeny of the Messenger of Allah. Allah's blessings and peace be upon them all. Ironically, and to the further benefit of Muslims' mission, Al-Mukhtar was the son-in-law of Al-Nu'man bin Bashir, the governor of Kufa, thus staying in the home of Al-Mukhtar, gave Muslim a strategic position who believed that the governor would have difficulty acting against him when the authorities invariably discovered his presence. However, our respected viewers from the home of Al-Mukhtar, Muslim, wasted no time in opening himself up to the visitors from among the Shia and carrying out the critical task for which he had been appointed by Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Al Mufid, may Allah be pleased with him, records that the Shia began to come regularly to see him in reference to Muslim bin Aqil, and that whenever a group of them gathered, Muslim, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, would read to them the Imam's letter and they would weep. One after another, the people came to Muslim in order for him to take their allegiance on behalf of the Imam alayhi salam. In this manner, 18,000 individuals paid their allegiance to Muslim bin Aqil, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him. Peace be upon you, O Master of Martyrs, when you were born and when you were murdered and when you will be resurrected. Our respected viewers, this is the end of today's episode. Let's pray that Allah the Almighty hasten the reappearance of the Master of our time to interpret the message of his grandfather who says, I only desire to spread good values and to prevent evil. Let's pray that Allah the Almighty enable the Master of our time to spread all these good values in the earth. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.